What the heck are these oil and wood finishes? Oil and wood? It's oil and wax. What's all the hype? And are they really as easy to apply as everybody seems to think they are? We're gonna find out today. We're gonna test one of them out on this bass guitar body. What's going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of Humboldt Workshop. Today, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna talk about some simple, easy to apply finishes, mainly one in particular. Now, I am well aware that you guys already know that there's bazillions of different finishes out there and they all range in difficulty of application depending on the results you're going for. You guys have seen me do several guitars with a high gloss finish where we have to apply tons and tons of coats let it cure, wet sand, buff it up to a high gloss. But today, I've been wanting to try something a little bit different and that's exactly what we're gonna do. One of the finishes that I've been wanting to try are these popular oil and wax finishes that everybody seems to be using these days. They look really easy to apply, but I've never tried one, so it is time we experiment and see how it works on a guitar body. Now the brand that I want to try myself is this Osmo Oil. This is not at all sponsored by Osmo, but this is the brand that I've been particularly wanting to try out. I've seen some great results and a lot of different techniques to apply this. Let's see how this goes as we follow the instructions right on the can on this guitar body. Now I'm gonna apply this finish to this guitar body as well as the neck. This body is one that I built as kind of a test body to test out a new design for a guitar that I was working on. And really I was making this one so that I could test all of my dimensions, but it came out usable. So I'm slowly over time going to work on finishing this. And look at that, it's a lefty. <laughs> I'm also gonna apply this finish to the neck as well. The neck is hard maple. This is some sort of pine softwood something. Now, by no means is this body perfect. It actually has a bunch of epoxy fills and different flaws in there because, well, I was intending to use it just as a test piece, but I think it's gonna look kinda cool once we get some sort of finish on here, bring out some of the epoxy fills, and we'll just see what it looks like. So, let's jump right in. Let's see if we can spill this everywhere. There's several different versions of this finish. The one that I'm testing here is the 1101 Clear Satin. This one in particular is the extra thin viscosity. Now, as I'm giving this a quick stir, there's a couple things that I want to bring up that I have read online when doing research on this product. Of course, we all know what you can do with stuff you read online. Take it with a grain of salt, but I've seen reports of people saying that the product tends to separate. As I'm stirring this, I'm not seeing any evidence of any separation. A lot of times when a product starts to separate, you can scoop up like a gunky buildup on the bottom. I'm not seeing any of that. Everything seems well mixed already. Also, I've seen people report that after you open it, the top can skin over. Again, no evidence of that. Doesn't mean that over time that this can't happen. Now, I suppose your results could vary, but for me, right now, everything seems fine, so it's time to apply it. Here we go. Wipe. Now, according to the instructions on the can, there's a number of different ways you can apply this Osmo oil, from brushing it on, wiping it on, or even spraying it on. I've seen a number of people use a fine Scotch-Brite pad to apply this, but I'm just going to stick with the basics and do what's listed on the can. I'm gonna use a nice, clean cotton rag to wipe this on. As I'm applying this to the wood, there are a few areas where I can see the oil soaking in as I'm applying it. When I saw those spots, I just went back and wiped on a little bit more material until it stopped soaking in. Well, that was easy enough to apply the first coat. The instructions say to wait about 30 minutes, wipe off any excess before moving on to the second coat. So we'll set this aside, put a coat on this neck. Where are we gonna set this aside? I have no idea. Now I did go back and forth with myself a little bit as to whether or not I wanted to try this finish on a neck. 
Currently my absolute favorite finish for a neck is just a straight oil finish. So since this is still an oil finish, it just has the added waxes, I felt like it was worth going ahead and giving it a try. If this works out as well as I'm hoping that it will, then I think this type of finish probably would work quite well on a neck. So I've let this sit about 30 minutes. It feels mostly dry to the touch, maybe a couple of damp areas. Now we're just gonna wipe off any of those damp areas and apply a second coat. Now the instructions do say that for things like furniture and that sort of project, one coat should be plenty. And for something like flooring to use two coats, we're gonna go with two coats. Definitely has a nice feel. It feels like wood, which I like. So that checks the first box. Now I'll grab the body and wipe down the excess material from that as well. There really wasn't a whole lot of excess material to remove, but there were just a couple of areas where there was a little bit to wipe off. Time for coat number two. I applied the second coat exactly the same way as I applied the first. I didn't do anything different. I just used the same rag and wiped on another good coat. Now I'll wait another 30 minutes before giving this a final wipe down. This has a really cool feel. I actually think that's going to work pretty good on a neck. It doesn't feel gummy or sticky. You can tell there's a finish on there, but it doesn't feel like plastic or anything. It still feels like the wood. The same thing goes for the body. You can tell that there's been something applied to the wood, but it still feels like the wood. It has a really soft feel to it. I kind of like that. After seeing how this finish feels, I really think this is going to be a viable option for that real wood feel. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, of course, I can't speak to the durability yet, but it does check the boxes for everything that I'm looking for in a raw wood kind of feel. Easy to apply, feels like real wood, and looks pretty nice too. This stuff comes in a bunch of different colors. You can basically use it as a stain for whatever sort of color you're looking for in your project. Now one question that I'm sure you're asking, and that's the cost. Well, really the cost has been the main reason that I've been hesitant to try this out. This stuff is really a little bit expensive. You get a little bit of sticker shock from it. This is a 0.125 liter can or 4.22 ounces. And I paid at my local Woodcraft $15.99 for this little can. Now hopefully what I read about this is true and that a little goes a long ways. And hopefully we can get several projects out of this before I have to try to buy some more. Make sure you're doing your research. Try to find the best price. You could probably shop around a little bit, maybe find it a little better cost. It's definitely not an inexpensive finish, so hopefully it's worth all the hype. I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick experiment. Maybe now it helps answer a couple questions you may have on the oil wood finishes. Stop saying oil and wood. It's oil and wax. Get it right, man. Now, I can't speak yet to the durability because, well, obviously we just applied this, but time will tell. From what I can see, they are plenty durable, super easy to touch up if you ever get a nick or a scratch, something like that. Overall, I think I'm gonna be using this more in the future. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. I don't know why I keep calling it an oil and wood finish. That just sounds weird. <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on the fact that I've been sick and a little under the weather. Yeah, that's my excuse. <laughs>